Coming up on the Fox 13 Quick Cast, the backlash continues after racist heckling at a BYU women's volleyball game this weekend. What BYU and black student groups have to say tonight. Plus, an inmate's death in central Utah is being investigated as a homicide. What we're learning about the investigation tonight. And see the touching reunion nearly a week after a man saves a young boy from drowning in a local reservoir. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13's Quick Cast starts right now. Thanks so much for staying up with us tonight. I'm Brian Schnee. And I'm Amy Nay. The Duke volleyball player who had racial slurs shouted at her at a BYU game is now speaking out, saying that she and her team felt unsafe and targeted Friday night in Provo. Duke University's Rachel Richardson posted on Instagram this afternoon, writing that both the officials and BYU coaching staff were made aware of the incident during the game, but failed to take the steps to stop the unacceptable behavior. She goes on to say that once BYU's athletic director, Tom Holmo, was notified, he was, quote, quick to act in a very respectful and genuine manner. As children of God, we are responsible. It's our mission to love one another and treat everybody with respect. And that didn't happen. We fell very short. It just goes to show the environment at BYU that someone felt comfortable enough to say that in public, in a public space with 5,000 other people there. They felt like they were justified in, in, in saying the N-word to someone on the floor. BYU Athletics says the fan, who was not a student, is now banned from all future games. An inmate's death at the Central Utah Correctional Facility in Gunnison is being investigated as a homicide. According to the Utah Department of Corrections, Ted Davey was found dead at the Henry facility this morning. Davey was incarcerated since 2019, serving a sentence for four third-degree felonies for DUI. In other news right now, a South Jordan bike shop facing thousands of dollars of property damage is after what owners say is their third break in this year. That's what you're seeing right now, two people driving that truck right in there. They went through both of their sliding doors at Hangar 15 Bicycles and took a couple of their e-bikes. South Jordan Police would like to hear from you if you have any information on the theft. West Jordan Police accusing a man, arrested rather, a man accused of stabbing two people during a fight at a basketball game at Ivasa Gym. Police say before the stabbing, 30-year-old Kirby Zhu threw a basketball at the victim's head and hit a bystander in the eye while he tried to punch the victim from behind. When he was arrested, Zhu claimed he was acting in self-defense. A man is now dead after a crash during the Knowles 200 off-road race in Tooele County yesterday. Police say the passenger, 33-year-old Charles Jerome Glover, died from his injuries. A driver is expected to recover. We have a link to a GoFundMe page for Glover's family posted at fox13now.com. It has been six days since a retired park ranger saved a nine-year-old boy who was stuck inside a truck in a Summit County reservoir for nearly 10 minutes. Well, today that boy got to meet the man who saved him. Joe Donnell happened to be close by while kayaking on Smith and Morehouse Reservoir when the truck was rolling down the boat ramp. He says he wasn't going to give up till he brought the little boy named Paxton out of that truck. The perfect outcome to a potentially bad situation. We're talking about going fishing. In fact, we got him a fishing pole and I said, as soon as you get out, man, we're going fishing. Miraculously, doctors expect Paxton to make a full recovery. Now that's good news. All right, let's take a look at the weather forecast, getting you ready, leading up to Labor Day weekend, where the focus for the upcoming week is this high pressure that'll position itself and strengthen right across the state. We're bringing record-breaking temperatures into the forecast. It's on the rise tomorrow, not record-breaking, but getting closer, low to mid-90s for highs. It's sunny all throughout the state. We do see triple digits in St. George. And for St. George, as we go from 100 to 106 by Thursday, keeping it hot all week long. You have that monsoon flow it is gone we don't see the moisture we don't see the rain northern utah sunny skies ahead we're at 100 it looks like we're going to potentially break four records we've never hit 101 in september looks like we get three days of that looking from thursday into the weekend it has been two weeks since Easton Oliverson suffered that horrific head injury while with his team at the World Series Little League game. The 12-year-old boy from Santa Clara, Utah, badly hurt before he got to play in the Little League World Series in Pennsylvania. His family says he spent the past few days resting, undergoing surgery on his skull Friday. He's expected to be transferred to a Utah hospital later this week. Finally tonight, a coffee shop in Logan 
might be haunted. That's what the owner of Country No Nonsense Coffee tells us. She shared with us this clip we're about to play for you. Take a look. That was it. It's just one of many occurrences, that they say, of hauntings at this coffee shop over the last several months. The owner says the ghost has even turned lights on and off, locked the bathroom door, changed the music that's been playing there, among other things. They say this ghost has even rang up its own purchases on the cash register and gave itself a military or employee discount. It is a brand new machine. We got the machine like two weeks ago. And so I was thinking maybe it's a glitch in the system that it keeps ringing things up but it's never the same item, and it never does it with me. It's only with my sister and my other employee. Well, the coffee shop had a group of paranormal investigators come out to look into this. More investigators are supposed to be visiting the shop tomorrow. I don't know. That's a lot of things going wrong. <laughs> I might believe her. Something to think about. Hey, that's our Fox 13 Quick Cast, but stay where you are because the Fox 13 Sports page is up next.